What's up guys? So welcome to vlog 6. It's been a couple weeks since vlog 5. The only thing I've thrown on the car is the Acuity throttle pedal spacer. I always felt like the OEM pedal was too far away and tucked into the corner compared to the brake. Especially when I'm running the big brake kit, like the, the bite is so much sooner and like the firmness of the pedal that I wanted the pedal like to be a little higher for the throttle. So the Acuity pedal spacer is literally just you remove three bolts on the OEM pedal, disconnect the pedal, put in the spacer, and then reconnect it. Same three bolts. The good thing about the Acuity is that you get three different settings. You can do it like further away, or you can get closer, or you can get real close to the brake pedal. Here's what I learned about the FK8 having its first real track day. The track day I did like a year ago was just like a paced session where you're getting to learn the track. It's like some aggressive parts, but mostly just like kind of smooth driving. Let's see, let's start with tires. The tires gripped insane all day. The uh, Advan AD09s are great. Uh, they're brand new, so you know, they got plenty of tread. I wish I was able to go on track with the AO52s that I have, but those are sitting and waiting for the t sponsored TE37Bs that are coming. So I can't imagine how much better it would have gripped on those. I'm excited for them, but at the same time, I don't know if they can trump these 21As. When I ordered the wheels and told everybody in the group and posted it on Facebook and Instagram, a lot of guys DM me like doubting it. They're like, man, I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna look good. They're not gonna look as good as TEs. And I was a diehard TE the Earth guy. But once the wheels came in and mounted on these tires, man, every, everyone flipped their script. They're all saying, holy crap, that, those look so sick on the car. They look awesome in person. They match the aggressive body kit really well. Now I want to set, like I got, I had so many guys tell me they want to get a set 21 A's now. And there's actually some guys that had 21 C's on order and they're like, man, I wish I could cancel that and get the 21 A. Yeah, these wheels look so good. I don't know if the TE37 V's can outdo them. Coilovers, I love them. Uh, the car felt so planted. I drove on the 15th hardest setting for the dampening on session one. It felt like it could use more. So I put the 18th on session two. And it felt really good, but I was like, yo, let me try to crank it up all the way to the 20th, which is the max hardest dampening. And that's the sweet spot. It felt perfect on track. That with the new spoon motor mounts, man, it was, it was just so planted and shifting and everything was like so smooth. I was nervous running the 21A because there's so little clearance between the wheel barrel, the spokes, and the brakes. So the caliper and the rotors are so close to the spokes and barrel. I was nervous how the brakes would cool down, but that was not an issue at all. The G4 fluid like held up great. There was no fade all day. I love my cooling setup right now. I think the huge vents on the Varus bumper and the hood, and I've got the hood vents and then the fenders got vents, along with the Koyo radiator and the HKS old cooler. The car just runs so good. The only issue I had was session two, and that wasn't even an issue. It was the DEFI control unit. I had my oil temperature warning beep set to 100 degrees Celsius. And you know, on the street, I only hit like 90. So I wasn't really worried about it, but I didn't think about how hot it would get on track and it hit like 105 Celsius. And so my sensor was just beeping the entire time for like the last two thirds of session two. And I'm sitting there trying to like look down at the remote and turn it off. Like set all, the only way you can turn it off is really set the warning level higher, right? but I'm trying to drive at the same time and I made a mistake. I like kind of went on the shoulder. So I was like, okay, like I just got focused on driving. I just dealt with the beep and then I changed it after session two. The only thing I had issues with driving wise was I need to trim a little bit more of the inner fender on the passenger front. And I'll show you what I mean. As you can see, it was digging into the tread a bit. And so this is the spot that it's rubbing right here. You can see all that rubber from the tire just stuck on there. So I'm gonna start sanding it down. So this is how I trimmed it down here. Another thing, it wasn't until afterwards when I was taking photos of my car on the track that I noticed this. 
the center cap is gone. And it was just a mental error. I forgot you need to remove center caps when you do tracking because there's a high chance it's going to pop off. It's, luckily, it's just the one. I, I don't know how I forget this thing. I was only concerned about cooling and I forgot about fuel starvation. Some people had it happen when they're at under half tank. Some people was like closer to quarter tank. Well, for me, it was at quarter tank. Right when I hit quarter tank on turn 14, I guess all the fuel was like pushed to one side from the G-Force. And so my throttle pedal will go in and out of actually giving me power. So, I mean, I don't know. I thought a third tank would be fine. Uh, I was wrong. So next time I'm gonna definitely keep it above half a tank. Lastly, I need one of those track lap timer thingies. My friend Anthony had one that plugged into OBD2 port. It uses GPS, relays it to the little app on his phone. It tells him his lap times. I really need that so I can see, you know, like where I need to improve. I don't know which one to get. Let me know which one you guys recommend. So another, another issue that these cars have, on the PRL is one big coupler that goes across and the coupler has a hump in it for any kind of movement. So it won't slide off. But the HKS is a small coupler, like two and a half inch, and then piping, and then another coupler, and then more piping. So what happens is from the hot side of the turbo, that coupler that connects to the first small little HKS bend, it has an issue where it pops off if you're running like 30 to 32 PSI boost. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, the coupler is finally on with the clamps. Should be good. All right, the last thing on today's list is this Blackview LTE connectivity module. What it does is it plugs into the USB port of your dash cam and allows you to use a SIM card so that your dash camera can alert you right away if you have any incidents during parking mode, like someone bumps into you or something. Right now, my DR970X, it's the version that doesn't have LTE built in. And the reason I have that one is when they accepted my sponsorship proposal, they allowed me to choose which camera I wanted. But the DR970X with LTE built in was on back order for months and I really wanted some content. So I just picked the next best one, which is the same one, but no LTE. I figured I can just add the module later. I also really wanted to get a dash camera in with parking mode because of the hit and run that I had in Orlando. You can check out the video here. What happens is when I get home and the dash cam connects to my home Wi-Fi, then I get, I get the notification of exactly what happened and a little video clip. So what this LTE module will do is, since it's always got internet connectivity, it'll let me know right away of any incident. Anyways, give me a like and subscribe guys. Below you'll see a link to my Shopify. I sell some merch. I sell some cool stuff like peakers and air fresheners and shirts. The shirts are like dry fit shirts so you'll stay really cool in them. I also have affiliate links below and anytime you guys use one of those, you're helping me to create more content like this. Thanks for watching guys.